I want now you to imagine me opening a metaphorical envelope with a flourish to announce the winner of the 2014 Templeton Prize, uh, Monsignor Professor Tomáš Halleck. Many congratulations. The optimal context for this vision is to encourage an open-minded spirit of humility. Many last laureates have typically been characterized not by claims always of final answers, but instead by the discipline and the adventure of endless questions. So John stressed that questions when framed in humility create an open mind which in turn makes it possible for us to learn and especially to learn from each other and often see new glimpses of a larger, timeless truth. Professor Hylex considers his audience to be many people who are believers and non-believers at the same time, much like the man in Gospel, Mark, chapter 9, verse 24, who cries out, I believe, help my unbelief. He calls for the church to seek the seekers, and yet he also asks those who seek to have patience with God. Tomas is one of the several people who work to promote the legacy and, uh, and follow up on the work of our great countryman and uh, friend whom we both miss almost every day. So for that reason I'm convinced that in Tomas, a tireless thinker, a prolific writer, a spiritual guide, the Templeton Prize is finding a very worthy recipient. Thank you. When St. Augustine was asked which three paths led most surely to God, he replied, the first is humility, the second is humility, and the third is humility. <laughs> Becoming a Templeton Prize winner is a great test of humility. <laughs> if I understand rightly Sir John Templeton's purpose, he sought to create from generation to generation, regardless of national, cultural, and religious boundaries, a community of men and women who have tried to understand the signs of the times in their epoch and to open their minds and hearts to the blowing of the spirit. At the time of the Velvet Revolution, 25 years ago, my friend Václav Havel expressed the hope that truth and love would triumph over lies and hatred. That is an enormous and difficult task for the entire remainder of history. In the rest of my life, I would like to do small things that would bring light and warmth to people in our world. So, help me God. My name is Roger Trigg from the University of Oxford. Um, it's my impression, I don't know if you would agree with me, that the Czech Republic is a much more secular place than next door Slovakia. I think there are several reasons. One reason is the very complicated uh, religious history of our, of, uh, of our country. But now I think uh, that uh, I always say that the uh, uh, most widespread uh, religion in our country is somethingness. The people say, I, I don't believe in God, I don't go in the church, but something must be. So this somethingness is very widespread religion. But it's a task for a theologian to interpret this something. Because I think today the main line is not between believers and unbelievers, but between seekers and dwellers. So uh, the number of those who are dwellers, who are 100% identified with the church uh, institution and teaching is decreasing, but it's increasing the number of seekers. And it's also decreasing the number of the dogmatic atheists. A sort of hard news question really, which is about what's happening in Ukraine at the moment. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. listening to you both talking about what happened in 1968, it's impossible not to be struck with some echoes of that. Do you, do you feel that when you watch events unfolding in Crimea and Kiev? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I think the great majority of our people um, 
their heart is on the side of the Ukraine and, and the struggle for democracy and independence in Ukraine. We know what it is, the Russian occupation. And uh, I know that Mr. Putin, the former uh, KGB agent, has in his head also this old uh, Russian uh, imperialistic uh, dreams and that uh, he has also an attempt to renew, uh, to renew uh, in a new form uh, the, the, the Soviet Empire. So I think it's very, very dangerous and, I, and I, I'm, I'm convinced that we need very strong united Europe. And it's very important uh, to have strong united Europe. The European Union is a historical chance. First in the, in the history of Europe, the Europe is united not through one ideology, not through a dictator, but through the free will of the nations. What I wanted to refer to, Dr. Templeton's, Templeton's comment that you were crucified between the paradoxes of the secular world and the world of religion. Could you give us an example of one of those paradoxes, please? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's something uh, very similar to what the, uh, Pope Benedict said, that, and, and also the John Paul II, that the reason and faith need each other. Sometimes I think that uh, faith and doubts need each other as a sister, they should uh, they should a little bit correct each other. That uh, that the uh, faith without doubts, without critical questions, could lead to uh, to fundamentalism, fanaticism. But also the doubts that is not able and not prepared to doubt about their own doubts could lead to cynicism. So I think these both extremes are, are, uh, are dangerous, that we need this dialogue, and this dialogue between the belief and, and non-belief, it's not a dialogue between two uh, ice hockey uh, teams. It's, it's a dialogue inside of practically every every human being inside his uh, head and, and, and heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think. Um, if in this spirit my father were here today, he would earnestly ask all of you here, and also those watching us on the webcast today or in the future, please consider Professor Heilig and his remarkable con contributions as an inspiration for all of us here, and especially in our global audience, to carefully ponder and then submit a worthy nominee for next year. Thank you very much.